Good afternoon. It's 4.30 p.m. on Tuesday, June 1st, 2021. We'll go ahead and call the City Council meeting for the City of New Ulm to order. Before we move on to item one, uh, we just wanted to state that because there are no more COVID uh, restrictions, that there will be no more option for teleconference moving forward. Item number 1.1, 1 .1, oath of office. So we'll move that item uh, after uh, you select uh, okay, a mayor. That makes sense. Item number two, consent agenda. Councillors, what are your wishes? I'll offer a motion to approve the consent agenda items. Second. Motion and a second. Any more discussion? Those in favor say aye. 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 And carries. We are going to go ahead and move down to item number 5.1, memorial plaque honoring former Mayor Joel T. Albrecht. Thank you, Councillors. I have a privilege to, today of uh, presenting to you the memorial plaque that is on the back wall. Uh, the last several mayors have had their plaques uh, mounted on the wall, so we wanted to add Joel Albrecht's um, tonight. So before we get started, I'd like to introduce Rita Albrecht, and if she would stand, please, and her two daughters. Um, we have Vicki and Ramona. And would you kind of go over by the plaque there a little bit? And I'm going to speak up here because there's a microphone, and then I'll join you back there in just a minute. Um, <clears throat> So Joel's background, for those of you that don't know, is he was a city councilor from 1992 to 2002 in Ward 3, which we know is a very good ward. Um, he was mayor from 2003 to 2011. Um, some of the things that while he was mayor, he introduced and started the German American Parade in 1998. The Downtown Water Committee for our beautiful flowers. He's the one who got that organized and got that going. Um, Highway 14, as we all know, is a thing that's been going on for over 50 some years. And Joel at one point was president of that and also a committee member. Uh, Joel organized many Germany trips uh, for Noam folks to go over to Germany. Uh, do you know how many, Rita? Six trips, a lot of trips. I was on one, it was very fun. Um, <clears throat> and he was also president of the Coalition of Greater Minnesota Cities. Um, and that was as a mayor, so a lot of other things that happened to him while he sat at this council table as the Ward 3 councilor and involved on many, many commissions. Um, I still always remember him talking about leaving town and sometimes stopping at the local um, liquor store and grabbing a six pack of different mixes of Shell's beer that he could, when he went to a meeting, he could hand out and promote our, our brewery. Come and visit us, come and try our beers. And um, everybody that worked with him, everybody that knew him, uh, respected him and enjoyed being with him and how much he loved this community um, and how he always was promoting this community. But he also loved one thing more and that was his family and you can tell by that tonight just looking at all the folks that are here tonight representing his family. So with that I'm going to go step to the back and we're going to have Rita pull the cover. And there you'll see Joel Albrecht's favorite picture. So let's have a round of applause for that plaque. <laughs> Uh, it's a pleasure to see all of you, and I know Joel would really appreciate that his seeing this on the back wall, where he was many, many times in this room, as we all know. So, thank, thank you, you very much. Thank, thank, you thank you for coming. Yes, thank thank you. you. Thank you, and thank you, Les, for putting that together. It was very nice. Item number 3.1, temporary on-sale permit for Seifert Bianchi American Legion Post 132. I'll make a motion to approve the issuance of a temporary on-sale liquor permit for the Cypher Bianchi American Legion Post 132 to sell alcohol in the event at German Park 200 North German Street on Saturday, July the 3rd, 2021, subject to compliance with all city and state requirements. Second. Motion and a second. Any more discussion? Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item number 3.2, general license renewals for 2021-2022. 
I'll offer a motion to approve the issuance of the following renewal general license for the period of July 1, 2021 and ending June 30th, 2022, subject to compliance with all city and state requirements, tobacco, fireworks, retail sellers, non-primary, kennel, mechanical, amusement device, sheep, solid waste, hauler, taxi cab, tree service. Second. Motion and a second. Any more discussion? Madam President, I had a question on this. Um, I saw, noticed in the taxi cab license that we only have Red's Ride. So are they are the, our only taxi cab provider now? They are the only one who submitted an application for the year. So we went from four taxi cab companies in town last year to one now. Even the medical one? So we don't have a policy of like notifying them saying, hey, you should have applied for your license. No. no. They they're just operating without a license if, if they're there. Yep. If oh. they are. Mm -hmm. That was when I was kind of like, whoa, wait a minute. Where happened to all our taxi people? Um, all right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And then, Nicole, um, and you, the, those who do maybe Uber or some of those other ride-sharing options, they're also required to be licensed within the city or no? I don't believe so. No. That is sure. something we've never really addressed. Um, okay. It's something... And that could be the reason why there's only one applicant. Could be. So. Ran them out of business, yeah. But I think that medical one is still operating. Mm -hmm. But maybe they'll see it tonight and get their license in. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> a motion and a second. Any more discussion? Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item number 3.3, .3, liquor license and permit renewals for 2021-2022. Motion to approve the issuance of the following annual liquor licenses and permits for the period ending July 1, 2021 and ending June 30th, 2022. Subject compliance with all city and state requirements. On sale intoxicating liquor license, Sunday liquor license, off sale intoxicating liquor license, on sale wine license, intoxicating malt liquor permit, Brewer's Taproom License, on sale 3.2% malt liquor license, and off sale 3.2% malt liquor license. Second. Motion and a second. Any more discussion? Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item number 4.1, conditional use permit for Eric Bodie. 3.4, August Shell Brewing Company liquor license extension to outdoor patio. Council President, Councilors, um, before you have a liquor license extension to an outdoor patio for um, August Shells Brewing Company, this would be over at 2215 North Garden Street, which would be their Star uh, Keller um, site, and it would be a 30 by 35 uh, foot patio coming off um, the side of their property, uh, would be enclosed, and um, I would note that this would be um, take effect uh, tomorrow and go till June 30th, 2022, uh, because it was um, got to us uh, late. It uh, couldn't be part of their normal liquor, liquor license renewal. I'll offer the resolution leave the reading. Second. Motion and a second. Any more discussion? Director Jorgensen, please call the roll. Councillor Mack? Yes. Councillor Schultz? Yes. Councillor Christian? Yes. Councillor Wormka? Yes. President Becker? Yes, motion carries. Item number 4.1, conditional use permit for Eric Bode. Madam President, members of the City Council, Dave Schnober, Community Development Director. Uh, Mr. Bode has applied for a conditional use permit to allow the location of four apartment dwelling units on property zone B3 and it's located at 126 North Minnesota Street. Planning Commission considered this matter at its May 27th meeting, at which time it unanimously recommended approval with four conditions, and its approval was based on five reasons that are stated in the staff report. Um, the proposed request is to add two floors to the existing building that's located um, at that site. Two of the units would be on the second floor and two of the units would be located on the third floor. The units and the structure in which they're located would be set back 52 feet from the front of the building. City code requires 
one and a half parking spaces per dwelling unit and the um, building plans for the project. So six spaces being located on the lower level, which is accessible from the rear of the property. So that's at the parking lot um, level. Um, in order to recommend approval of the uh, permit, uh, the uh, city council will need to determine that the request complies with the conditions required for the granting of a permit, and that's found in section 9.82, subdivision two of the city code. <clears throat> the um, recommended conditions are as follows. The applicant will pay the cost to record the permit with the Brown County Recorder's Office. Number two, the applicant will provide on the subject property 1.5 stalls of parking for each dwelling unit. Number three, any change in the parking arrangement shall receive prior approval from the Community Development Department. And number four, the four dwelling units will generally be located on the subject property as shown in the building plans provided by RDS Architects and dated May 14th, 2021. That would conclude the report from the Planning Commission. Thank you, Mr. Snowbrick. I'm just gonna add from the Planning Commission, you know, like Dave stated, it was unanimously uh, recommended approval. There were some uh, questions from one of the commissioners was asking about uh, deliveries for uh, the catering kitchen. And that was stated it was gonna enter in through the side door. Uh, and I further asked the question, uh, if we're gonna look to look at it as a city, maybe possibly for uh, some sort of parking on the side of the building uh, for deliveries, possibly, you know, to enter the property, you know, just throwing that out there that, you know, because otherwise that rear of the building would be a public right of way, if I would be correct by saying that, would that be correct, Roger? Or for the rear of that building? Well, for deliveries? For, for the alley. It's an alley. alley. alley it's considered right. an alley. Yeah. So. That was, you know, something to be considered. Um, and then um, I did receive one call at, uh, from an individual that watched the meeting and asked, you know, uh, about parking for the facility, you know, and I stated that it's in the downtown district. They don't need to have provide parking for the B3 is what I stated to the individual. And then, uh, you know, the individual stated, uh, you know, what about uh, another example she said was what about trash cans, you know, is it going to be in the public right away or you know things of that nature but that was the extent of the call that i took um after the meeting i should note that um <clears throat> all of the other uses proposed for the building are permitted uses in the b3 zoning district yeah so a comment i understand the parking issue i mean i had talked to one other counselor about it i remember back george's ballroom the parking issue our brand new million and a half dollar amphitheater is now booking weddings left and right. Did we provide all the parking for them? No parking required in the B3. So I'm not really gonna look at parking being the issue for this type of business. It's a permitted business in our downtown zone. There's no parking requirements. I think it's great for downtown. I, I agree. I'm just stating. A little, I'm, I'm the counselor that's got the parking concerns and Few people have talked with me about the concept of a Saturday with 400 people coming to a wedding um, and a new restaurant there and apartments there. And I didn't even think about folks at the amphitheater having a wedding right across the street, that that's oh. a lot of cars in one very small area. Um, and will they take up all the parking spots of some of our business district um, so, well, we have our business owners complaining that they can't get in their stores to shop. I don't know, but I, uh, are the apartments going to be assigned parking? Do we know that? Yes, they're yeah. underground. It's, it's dedicated Okay, parking. so it's not just, okay. Um, it's, it's on the Did the planning commission plan. talk a little bit about that major congestion on some, I mean, I know it's not going to be all the time, but. As far as the planning commission, there was no concern about the parking. The, the parking was explained to us and in our packet that there's, six parking stalls underneath the building and that the parking is strictly for the tenants that rent the apartments or own the apartments 
the item that was before the Planning Commission only had to do with the dwelling units being located on the property. It did not have to do with any other use of the <coughs> building. And that is what this is, correct? Mm -hmm. Correct. You're talking, I mean, you are talking about the wedding space and the venue for 400 people in this. Yeah, that was but, provided for informational right. purposes okay. All right. to the city council. So another day, another discussion. Council. I am. I mean, we're not concerned when the BNL has 200 people inside their establishment and outside their establishment. It'd be about the same idea, the same concept. I mean, it's. I think what the community director is yeah. trying to say is if Mr. Bodie wasn't putting apartments up there, they wouldn't be here. Right. They'd be putting it in. Permitted yeah. use. It would not be in front of the council. So, I mean, with that part, I want to offer the resolution, weigh the reading, approving with conditions the application of Eric Bodie on behalf of Zen Franklin, I like that, LLC, requesting a conditional use permit to allow the location of four apartment dwelling units on property zone B3, general business district, and located at 126 North Minnesota Street. Second. Motion and a second. Any more discussion? Director Jorgensen, please call the roll. Yes. Councillor Schultz? Yes. Councillor Christian? Yes. Councillor Warmka? Yes. President Becker? Yes, motion carries. Item number 4.2, conditional use permit for Jeff Bertrang. <coughs> Good evening, councillors. John Nisley, planner with City of New Ulm. Um, Jeff Bertrang, on behalf of New Ulm Public Schools, uh, is requesting a conditional use permit to allow the location of a career technical education or CTE center on property zoned I-2 General Industrial District and located at 200 to 226 North Valley and then 201 to 211 North Front Street. At its meeting on May 27th, 2021, the Planning Commission unanimously recommended approval of the conditional use permit with two conditions and for the reasons stated in the staff, uh, staff report uh, that is attached. Um, the CTE Center's purpose is to provide high school students with um, exposure and access to technical careers available within our region to allow students to earn technical career uh, certifications or credentials before leaving high school and to provide a space for adults um, to recertify or retain or gain technical skills in a particular trade or technical career. Um, courses to be taught at this site um, include but are not limited to automotive, machining, milling, welding, construction, carpentry, and engineering. Section 9.16 of the city code um, would allow this type of center to be located anywhere uh, within the city, uh, provided it would have a conditional use permit. Should be noted um, that this type of facility um, that has a, let's call it an educational lean to it, um, these types of facilities are located in the I-2 district um, throughout New Ulm. Um, one actually just happened uh, to come in front of the city council a few months ago for the New Ulm Youth Wrestling Center, uh, which is um, just, let's call it north of uh, New Ulm Steel and Recycling. There were two conditions uh, with the Planning Commission's recommendation. One was that the applicant and property owner will pay the cost to record the permit with the Brown County Recorder's Office, and two, the applicant and property owner and any users of the property will not use the alley right of way for parking purposes. And that would conclude the staff report. Thank you, Mr. Nisley. I don't have anything else to add from the Planning Commission's meeting. John covered it. Uh, I'll offer the resolution, waive the reading, proving with conditions the applicant of Jeff Bertrand on behalf of New Ulm Public Schools, requesting the conditional use permit to allow the location of Career Technical Education CTE Center on property zoned I-2 General Industrial District and located 200 to 226 North Valley Street and 201 to 211 North Front Street. All second. 
Motion and a second. Any more discussion? Just a comment that you know, we as a council have been strongly supportive of the public school in this process and this project. This is wonderful for our community and our families and our industrial folks um, that this is moving forward. So um, very excited about this. I would also like to make a comment and just thank you, Jeff, for doing everything that you've done to yes. get this going and rolling. And it's so important. And um, people in these industries are screaming for good young help. And there's definitely a need for our youth to um, career path and have options. And I just love that this is going to be available for them. So thank you. We could ask him to come up and give an update if <laughs> uh, he's got any update. <laughs> well, people are excited about it this. Is. They want to I know what's going on. Would like so to come hear up and tell it. us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Train 414 South Pain Street. Yes, last things were progressing. Uh, we approved contracts at our board meeting last Thursday for different contractors. Um, one of them has already started the demolition to clean out some of the spaces. Um, we're getting, working on equipment. Uh, we have staff hired. We have one more to hire yet. Courses have been identified, classes assigned. We're just working through the process now to get the remodeling done. Do so you think it'll still be open by fall? Or it will be. I don't think it will be. You're thinking very positive. <laughs> yeah. I am. Great. That's the update. Thank you very much for the support. Yes. yes. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. Any more discussion? Director Jorgensen, please call the roll. Councillor Mack? Yes. Councillor Schultz? Yes. Councillor Christian? Yes. Councillor Wormka? Yes. President Becker? Yes. Motion carries. Item number 4.3, preliminary plat of Milford Heights, fourth edition. Okay, the uh, planning commission again at their May 27th meeting, and there is a mistake on the um, staff or the uh, request for council action uh, on that particular item. Um, and they did so because the plat complies with the requirements uh, found in the uh, city code. Um, the applicant in this case is um, Erickson Construction and Developing. It's an LLC. Uh, the street address of the property is 637 to 641 Fender Drive, and it is part of uh, Milford Heights First Edition. Property is zoned R1, and the property is currently vacant. The um, platted area consists of two existing lots that are going to be replatted into two new lots. <coughs> and the reason for doing this is to equalize the uh, lot widths. Right now, um, lot five, um, its um, width will be reduced and lot fours will be increased. Um, lot four is approximately 65 feet and its width will be expanded to 80 feet, just provides more uh, buildable area. Um, in the um, report, you will find a table which provides information about the um, existing lots, about the new lots. Um, as was indicated before, um, the lots comply with city code requirements. There were two conditions. One is that they should pay the platting fee of $210, and the second is that they provide an electronic file of the plat in an AutoCAD uh, uh, format. Uh, and that would um, conclude the, uh, the staff report. Thank you. Going to just bring up from the Planning Commission, it was brought up why the lots were dedicated to, with two different lot widths. Uh, and Dave stated in the meeting that uh, it was for a more affordable housing, that there were two different widths, and the developer is choosing to build larger size homes rather than the smaller size homes is the reason why we have this before us. With that, motion to approve with conditions of preliminary plat of Milford Heights, fourth edition. Second. Motion and a second. Any more discussion? Those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item number 6.1, select mayor to fill vacancy. <coughs> Council President and Councilors, before you have uh, the action to select, a, select the mayor to fill the current vacancy uh, on May 25th, 
2021, seven candidates were interviewed. Uh, the top two candidates that were selected by council were Michelle Margraf and Terry Sweeney. Uh, and so I'll open the discussion up to council to see which way you guys want to go to formally appoint. Before we do that, I would like to just say thank you to um, all of the candidates that had put uh, an application in for mayor. It's not easy to go out and um, put yourself out there and to come in for an interview. And um, I just appreciate everyone doing that. We did feel that Terry and Michelle were um, clearly the strongest candidates for that. And... Um, Felt it was worth bringing it back to select today. Since no official appointment could be made at the prior meeting. I think some of the discussion, at, well, I agree with you that, um, Madam Chair, that we had you know, nine people, how lucky we are in, to be in this community to have nine people step up originally and file to become mayor and, and seven who actually interviewed. And, and as we said at our last meeting that they all did well and they all did do well. Um, each candidate brought something a little unique and a little twist with what they had to say. And um, it was in a very interesting process. And I think as we discussed at our last meeting that this is an, about a 19 month or so appointment this is a temporary position. Um, the person who we do select will have to either not run next time or will have to run as mayor in a year and a half or so. Um, same with all the people that applied, could also file and uh, run for mayor in a year and a half. Um, some of the discussion we had was about some of the main duties of the mayor right now is to get some of our commissions filled and, and um, take hold of some things that have um, that we've neglected for a little bit that we need to get back on track with um, and when you have somebody that has a lifelong history in New Ulm knows a ton of people um, we, we lean pretty heavily on Terry Sweeney as being able to do that not taking anything away from Michelle Markraft because we really were impressed with her abilities and new ideas but I think for this 19 month appointment um, uh, I would select Terry Sweeney as the mayor. You know, a couple of comments I had made at the meeting. I mean, it was, again, thanking all the candidates that came in. And when we did the rating system, I mean, one thing wasn't brought out. It actually came in as a tie. But for our council to pick out the top two and come in as a tie means they're both very well-qualified candidates. I mean, that night we didn't vote. You kind of know where the consensus was going. I mean, I myself... Michelle, you were at the top of my list, but also as a counselor, I know we want to move forward. I'm going to back Terry Sweeney or Michelle, whichever one comes tonight. They're going to be the mayor representing us, so we just we need to move forward. I'm going to just add that you know they both were excellent. I mean, they interviewed well. M Michelle brought a fresh perspective, you know, and I had a lot of phone calls within the community that people, they're ready for that fresh perspective. But, you know, I'm going to lean towards Terry as of tonight yet uh, because, he's, you know, he knows New Ulm. He knows, you know, anything and everything, and, and he served on just about every committee or commission within the city. If I yes. right. and yeah. it's over and above and beyond, and that's where I'm going to lean tonight. But I wouldn't discourage Michelle from, if, you know, she in a year and a half, if you'd like to throw your name in the hat and run for election and let the people choose at that time. And once again, just piggybacking on everything that's been stated, Miss Margraf, you did a. It was a wonderful wonderful interview process with you just to getting a to hear a fresh perspective but that is just it right now the main objective of the mayor is to appoint the commission positions i mean and it's you kind of have to take a step back and, and and look at terry's lifelong commitment to this community his dedication to this community and not that not taking anything away from michelle for everything you've already accomplished in your life and and, and dedication to the town you've already been here for not that long of a time but that, that was just it. My, my vote did go split, almost a split decision between Terry and Michelle, but just knowing Terry's lifelong dedication to this town and, and the fact that he does know the entire community 
upside and down, uh, my vote did go towards Terry as well. So, I'm going to offer a motion to select Terry Sweeney as mayor of New Ulm and appoint him on June 15, 2021. And a second. We have a motion and a second. Any more discussion? Uh, again, the comment. Uh, either either one would have been nominated or whatnot. Mm -hmm. I want to support the mayor. The person's got to come in and do the job, so we'll just move forward. Any more discussion? Those in favor of Terry Sweeney, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Terry will be appointed at the June 15th meeting. And we are going to go back to 1.1 and table this item for June 15th. Do I need a motion? I think you need a motion. Yes. May I get a motion to table <laughs> item 1.1? I'll offer a motion to table 1.1. 1 .1. Second. Motion and a second to table oath of office. Any more discussion? Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item number 7.1, continuation of local performance measurement survey. Council President, Councilors, bef uh, before you have uh, the annual um, ask to continue the local performance measurement survey, we do this every year. Uh, I do think it's a good measure um, mm -hmm. of the community to see where we stand uh, as a city. Uh, and so I do recommend uh, continuing this, this survey. I'll second. Do you want to first? Do you want to first it? First. <laughs> Motion. First. <laughs> first. Second. <laughs> first and a second. Any more discussion? I think this resolution. I think it's a worthwhile survey and we get a lot of input on it. Absolutely. And uh, it I think it can help staff for direction, you know, for the department heads and you know, mm -hmm. guidance on some weaknesses or strengths and moving forward. Um, I do see an area that we really drop down on. Mm -hmm. I mean, so far the last ten years have all been basically the same, but you know, you never know. Well, and it's good and to know that even through COVID, we stayed pretty consistent as well. Um, still love the they, firemen, right? They still do. <coughs> um, are there any other benefits of conducting this survey? Is there anything that we get um, just the support to I conduct? Think there the are survey? a few government programs that would. We would be eligible for because we do the survey. Okay. Yeah. I couldn't identify any And it gives the, pe ones. the people a chance to say something about our community. Mm -hmm. I think people like that. People that. Yeah. They do. They do. Well, and from, you know, from my perspective, just looking at the data, you know, like Councillor Schultz had mentioned, you know, we can look at areas if there is a significant dip, you know, for whatever reason, well, why is there a dip and how do we address that? You know, because again, it's always snow, roads, and, and we strive to do it better every year, but you know, yeah, like we'll last, the line that just came out, I was really surprised that NuCat didn't go up. And I, you know, we went to the high definition, and that was some of the complaints that they couldn't even see some of our nameplates and with the old old stuff. But now they can, and it's it's a lot clearer. And and I just thought we'd get a little better bump. So we got to keep working on uh, NuCat. Mm -hmm. We do have a motion and a second. Any more discussion? Director Jorgensen, please call the roll. Councillor Mack. Yes. Councillor Schultz. Yes. Councillor Christian. Yes. Councillor Warmka. Yes. President Becker. Yes. Motion carries. Item number 7.2, first consideration of ordinance number 2021-043. Uh, Madam President, um, the light committee has been in existence and met off and on for probably at least three years. Um, during the last couple meetings, one of the things that we were trying to focus on was dealing with um, some of the easier, what should be the easier uh, enforcement issues. Um, and these relate primarily to what we refer to as junk cars, um, cars that are inoperable, they're not licensed, um, they're you know, otherwise something that is a blight on the community. Um, but in looking at this, there, the, our current ordinance that applies to this, section 8.63 is citywide. So it's R1 residential to industrial to commercial. Um, it's the same ordinance for everyone. And the committee in looking at this thought that there should be some adjustments. So the amended ordinance 
would basically provide for two things. First would be to have different notice periods for residential areas, which would remain at seven days, and for um, the other areas, the business or industrial, which would increase to 30 days. And one of the reasons for this is that there are repair businesses, garages, located in those areas. And they, of course, can get disabled cars that are brought in for service. If they don't have room to keep them indoors, they will store them outside. And then after much discussion, the committee believed that probably 30 days would be enough time for the vehicle to get repaired. Um, and if it's going to take longer than that, then either the owner or the shop will probably have to find some place to store it to get it out of the site. But this would give them some period of time that we think would be reasonable to get it taken care of. Um, now, the last part of it that's new is the current ordinance, which prohibits unlicensed vehicles, um, technically would apply to every car dealer in the city of New Orleans. And I realize their inventories are very short until they start getting some chips at the manufacturers. But once they're able to bring in inventory, um, all those cars are technically illegal right now. And no one intends that. We want them to be able to maintain their inventory. So this would exempt um, any dealer who is licensed, new, used. If they have a car license, uh, sales license, they would not be required to have licensed vehicles on their lot. Um, or registered vehicles. So those are the changes we think with that. Um, law enforcement, city staff would be better able to move forward to try and deal with some of the problem areas in New Orleans. We think it would give um, the business owners in particular a little more time to get things cleaned up. Um, we think it would be fair as far as you know, treating the dealers the way that they need to be. Uh, but we're just looking for a way because the people in the trenches who have to enforce this, the police department, the building officials, uh, when they approach a property owner regarding a complaint, the first thing they're hearing is, well, what about this guy? What about that guy? And they've got it too. Well, we want to be uniform, we want to be fair, and we think that this will give us the tools that everyone needs to try and fairly enforce this, so at least we can clean up this part of our town. So and this would be the first consideration, so there wouldn't be any vote or action taken. But if you do have any questions, if you thought we should be making some other changes, this would be an appropriate time to discuss it. So how hard is it to get a license to be a vehicle dealer? Right, that was my question. I mean, is that filling out a form and now you can't touch me because I, mm -hmm. I know my... You can't touch me. That, that says that they're exempt from the unlicensed or unregistered. Mm -hmm. um, right. So if they've says. got junk vehicles, they still have to comply with Still got to clean that out. Okay. Right. Yeah. Right. So you don't see that as an out? No, I mean, that's uh -oh. the only thing is they've got to otherwise have an operable vehicle. So if they have something that was crushed in the demo derby and they're going to let it sit there, they think they can let it sit there indefinitely just because they have a dealer license, no, no. You know, unless this kind of goes down, you know, I'm not going to name a business, but, you know, if a business says there's one in town or some in town that have, it could be considered their inventory and they're, they're right. going to, you know, it's smashed, say, for example, it's inoperable. And while I haven't sold it yet or I haven't repaired it yet to sell, so this kind of separates it. If there's a complaint, they'll have 30 days to remove that vehicle in order to comply, you know, because if they want to become a licensed dealer, the city is going to have to issue sign off on their license of where their license is. And that would be on the B2 service district within our, our, our yeah, the, um, the, city. The state issues the licenses. Councilor Mack is correct. The, the city gets involved in confirming that the location they want to operate out of is appropriate. Complies. Right, complies, right. With our so own my, code. my other comment or question is the, is 30 days too short of a notice based on what you're saying? If a shop is really backlogged and they're really busy working, is that? 
Well, we, we I don't debated know. I'm just that. asking the question. Yeah, we debated that. Yeah. And, you know, I think if someone had a real exotic car and you're waiting for parts from Italy or something like that, yeah, that could take a while. But presumably the person who's got that can afford to store it someplace as well until the parts come in. Um, but if you want to go 45 days or 60 days, I think the committee just kind of thought 30 should be enough time to get these things covered. And unless we were trying to work as a committee to try not to put a business out of business, but we don't want them all to have to say to put privacy fence or screenings up and things of that nature. You know, this it's a trying to be consistent and you know and within the community. Part of this, I mean, you know, we're going to be enforcing whatever the code requires. Um, but I think part of this also might depend to some extent on complaints. So if you have, you know, a repair shop who's got a vehicle parked behind their building and if it's there for 31 days and no one has complained, mm -hmm. I don't think that, you know, the police are going to be swooping in right. and giving them a notice. Right. But on the other hand, if there are complaints, they're going to have to deal with it because somebody is getting offended by it or bothered by it. You know, another way to look at it less uh, would be, you know, our new K&R towing building that's going to be going up in our industrial park. We're requiring them to put up a fence and screening because they're going to be a towing yard for smashed vehicles and they're going to be behind the screening so you won't see it, mm -hmm. you know, on those aspects. Could these other businesses just put up fencing? They could. Um, I think the... I believe that the <coughs> ordinance, yeah, the, yeah, it says they have to be in a building, mm -hmm. a structure enclosed on all sides by opaque construction materials. So, our zoning it, people might I, comment on whether or not you have to have a roof on the building. Um, that's one of the sides, I would think. But I thought it, I'm going to ask the community development director that question. We had that discussion about with the fencing, mm -hmm. the opaque material, because if not, the city of Norm is in direct violation. So I know that's the correct answer. We've got a junk impound lot <laughs> with impounded cars in it that just has an opaque fence around it. Mm -hmm. Well, I, th I think our um, position in the past is that if... Um, it was screened with fencing, right. but that was considered adequate. That that's considered adequate. So these businesses could simply put up adequate fencing, and then they could have the vehicles for more than 30 days. If it's, right, if, if it's that enclosed. Is, okay. Correct, yes. Mm -hmm. um, and I, and I think as the council is aware, we also are um, working on a new zoning ordinance, and that's something that we have gotten into as part of that process. And, okay. and we are going to go with, um, if, if it's fenced and screened and you can't see it, mm -hmm. you know, what, that would be acceptable. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Um, I do have a question about item C, pieces, chunks, or blocks of concrete, wood, or other building materials, except as part of a structure, sidewalk, driveway, or curb. I mean, could that be a pile of firewood? Could that be some Hollywood blocks? Could that be, you know, um, or is it those items as well? Well, that's part of the existing mm -hmm. code. Yes. And we did take a look at that. Um, now, there are other provisions in the code that deal with debris junk, garbage, mm -hmm. um, to try and handle other offensive situations. But, uh, yeah, that's, I think you point out a problem. And I think this is something where, again, quite frankly, if this <coughs> is part of a business's inventory, that's an issue. Um, Wouldn't that come down to you as a counselor to determine if that's a violation, wood versus firewood? I mean, there's always that lawyer interpretation of... I mean, if I'm really peeved at my neighbor, I could call him for well, firewood for one, or... For one thing, I, I mean, you could probably make an argument that firewood is a building material because this says there are other building materials. Okay. So I think C relates to building materials, and okay. I don't think generally you'd consider firewood that. No. If a person had planks. And does say pieces or chunks. But you have to read the blocks. entire sentence. 
wood or other building materials. So other building wood, materials modifies other. the preceding language. So I think that whole subdivision deals with building materials. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is the first reading tonight. And this would be where we would consider any changes, I guess. Yeah, if you if there was something that you mm -hmm. wanted to change, this would be the, probably the best time to do it. And <clears throat> remind me, Councillor, what the um, what the legal ramifications are for violations. Uh, generally, these are I believe these are petty misdemeanors. So, and it would be something where I don't think we've been doing this, but technically, you could be fined every day the violation occurs. Mm -hmm. Yep, to three hundred dollars. And I think generally mm -hmm. it's on the schedule as a payable at $100, but the maximum for petty is $300. Yeah. Are they issued a, a warning first? That's what the letter is. Is it? Okay. That's the intent to give them some notice. Gotcha. They don't just get a citation mm -hmm. that they can and still get a Law enforcement through. sends that notice? Is yes, that the it's intent? It's usually law enforcement, mm -hmm. right? And then once these updates would go into effect, these would be enforced on all businesses and homes? It well, would just what, like, what would we've been right. What we've been doing so far is, uh, the police department, Chief Borkert, has divided the city into four <coughs> four quadrants, and he's assigned specific officers to take care of each of them, so they're familiar with the area and the potential problems that are there, and they would begin enforcing. And I think they definitely deal with complaints first. They're not necessarily going out of their way to look for what they think are problems. If they see something obvious, they'll probably act on it. But um, yeah, it would go into effect after the publication process is completed. We do have our police chief here. Does he have any comments on this topic? And like, since he's, their department's gonna have to do the enforcement. Um, President Bedker, members of the council, Dave Borker, I'm the Chief of Police for the City of New Ulm. And I, yeah, consistent with what um, Attorney Hippert has mentioned, we're, we are, um, we always try to kind of do a push in spring, early summer, as far as um, where we have our officers assigned to those areas where they're actively looking for these, these violations. And then generally after that, by and large, we rely on complaints that come in and that's that's worked relatively well i think that's been a good fit i don't know if that answered your question i think so yeah i just don't know if you personally are hearing any concern will foresee any issues with these the new ordinance no when we talked about it to, to try to answer that that question when we talked about it that that the blake committee um you know we were just talking about that i think that the practical sense as far as the seven days generally isn't doesn't seem to be enough time for, for businesses from a practical standpoint. And we're just really looking at, at being consistent. Mm -hmm. What about the 30 days? I think 30 days is, is much more realistic. You know, if someone has, if a, a business has um, something out there for a certain period of time, you know, after 30 days, and, you know, we, we try to use some discretion, but we want to be consistent. So I, I think 30 days is a, is a much better time frame so do you think that seven days should be changed to 10 days Would that be a little more flexible for, you think for the residential for the residential ones or do you think you're okay with what it is i think we're okay with what it okay. is that one i'm going to back to the, the blight committee which i'm on we said that seven day i mean that's been the standard mm -hmm. for a long time in new Ulm and residential i don't believe it should sit around that long okay. mm -hmm. just asking the question thank you Thank you. Okay. Moving on. Item number 7.3, vacate easement area for Jason Erickson. Okay, this particular request is directly related to the preliminary plat that you earlier um, approved of Milford Heights uh, fourth edition and the effect of that particular plat is to move a property line and currently 
on five feet on either side of that property line, we have an existing utility easement area. And so when we move the property line, all of a sudden that existing easement area on the new plat is in a portion of the buildable area of that um, new lot. And so uh, Mr. Erickson, who is the owner of Erickson Construction and Developing, that's the firm that's doing the platting, they've asked that that um, easement area be vacated. Um, staff doesn't have any concerns with that since um, the uh, easement areas on both the front and the rear of the lot stay in place, so we have continuous um, strips of um, land that we can use for utility purposes. There would be two conditions. Um, one of them is listed on the report. The second uh, we would like to add at this point in time. The first is that the easement vacation will be effective with the filing of the resolution approving this request with the Brown County Recorder's Office. And the second one is that the resolution is effective with the filing of the new plat of Milford Heights 4th edition. Thank you, Mr. Snowbird. I'm gonna, it, 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 it's really simple, I understand it from my days in the zoning department. Offer resolution, way the reading, approving the request of Jason Erickson on behalf of Erickson Construction and Developing LLC to vacate a 10 foot wide easement area centered on the side property line between 637 and 641 Fender Drive with both stated conditions. Second. Motion and a second, any more discussion? Director Jorgensen, please call the roll. Councillor Mack? Yes. Councillor Schultz? Yes. Councillor Christian? Yes. Councillor Warmka? Yes. President Becker? Yes, motion carries. Item number 8.1, report of claims paid. I'll offer a motion to accept the list of claims paid in the amount of $4,139,426.88. Second. Motion and a second. Any more discussion? Favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries with no new business. We this we adjourn. Yeah.